While we wait on the Supreme Court's decision on possibly overturning Roe v. Wade in the Dobbs v. Jackson case, the court has already made some huge decisions. Yesterday, the court struck down a New York gun control law in a 6-3 decision. Joining us this morning to talk about what this all means is Dr. Eddie Carter, constitutional law expert and professor at Prairie View A&M University. How are you, sir? I'm great. Thank you for having me. Definitely. Thanks for coming on. So let's talk about this New York gun law. What was this law to begin with? It's basically about carrying guns in public and making someone prove they need the protection. Yes, essentially, it was a uh, one century uh, old law in the state of New York that was said that in order for you to uh, <clears throat> carry a gun outside the context of the home, uh, you had to have uh, or be able to establish a special uh, need or a special defense, uh, such as uh, the need for self-protection. And so the law really prohibited carrying a gun as a concealed weapon outside of the context of the home unless you could demonstrate that you had a special need. Certain gun owners uh, protested against that particular law, which, as I said, was over 100 years old, and said that the law really reduced gun ownership to a privilege rather than a constitutional right. And so they challenged the uh, New York law and it made its way to the Supreme Court. And that's exactly what the Supreme Court ruled on yesterday. And so them, them overturning this, what does this decision mean for the state of New York? What does it mean for the country? It's very interesting. Uh, first of all, the court struck down the law and said that uh, <clears throat> there's no constitutional basis for having to establish a special need in order to carry a, a concealed weapon into the public. Uh, Heller, a previous decision made by the court, and I believe it was 2008, had determined that we have the right to bear arms within our home for the purposes of self-protection and self-defense. But this law moves outside the domain of the home into the realm of the public. And the second thing that the gun um, really did was it established uh, the fact that no other uh, constitutional right, such as uh, the, the right to possess a gun uh, requires that you establish a special need. So therefore, why would there be a need for a special need to be established with regard to gun rights? And so in light of that, the court overruled this particular uh, New York law. And so this is sort of a major statement reflecting the conservative majority of, of the court. Uh, the uh, decision of the court breaks right down uh, conservative versus progressive lines. Uh, it was a 6-3 decision. The majority of the court, the conservatives on the court, uh, voted to strike down the uh, New York law in favor of uh, expanding gun rights, so to speak. And the uh, more progressive uh, uh, members of the court issued uh, the dissent with regard to this issue. Uh, an interesting thing about the, the decision, if you you read it is uh, the way that the court clarifies what it was not doing in the decision. It makes some very interesting statements. It says we're not deciding who may lawfully possess a gun, it says we're not deciding the requirements for possessing a gun. We're not even deciding the kinds of weapons that ordinary citizens may possess. So uh, really, you ask about the future implications of this decision that those questions with regard to what the court is not doing may portend that uh, there are some very significant decisions lying in the future uh, with regard to gun ownership and uh, the right to possess guns. The last thing I would say about the decision is it essentially punts uh, the decisions and the guidelines and the restrictions uh, to the states and allows them to determine their own rules and their own laws with regard to this matter. Very interesting decision. Yeah. We were on Supreme Court Watch today. Dr. Eddie Carter, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Absolutely. Thank you.